Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and going to be having a look at another new game today, and this is Book of Demons, which uh, is developed by Thing Trunk and uh, published by 505 Games. Big thanks to them for this copy. Um, so this is a hack and slash um, type of game, a bit like Diablo. I actually think it takes its uh, inspiration from Diablo. And uh, this is going to be the first of a series of, I believe, nine different games. Um, all in this kind of paper style, like a paper card uh, look to the aesthetics, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be nine different games uh, based on the sort of nine different genres. I believe the next one coming to Steam, uh, which I think is going to be next year, is kind of an XCOM type game, like an Aliens uh, alien type game. So uh, the guys here are aiming to do nine games based on the popular themes, reimagining them um, as a sort of a, a paper style with a bit of a twist. But let's say this one's a hack and slash dungeon crawling game. Uh, we're going to go straight into one of the crawls and talk about some of the uh, features in the game here. So yes, your character here. You get three character classes to take on. And once I can clear these mobs, I think we've backed in a bit at the moment. Dive straight into a boss battle. There we go, it's better. Right, sorry about that, it's a bit of a manic start. It's not normally like that, but I think I was in the middle of a save game, so apologies for making that look a lot worse than it uh, intended to be. So, anyway, you start off as this uh, warrior, basic type character, and you have this kind of, you see the light around the, the character. I don't know how it works, it's going to come across on YouTube. But um, basically it's like a, a cone of light that emanates from you. So if you look to the very edges of the screen, it's a lot darker than it is in the middle. And that's important because basically anything in your light sphere that you can see, you can interact with. And you'll see this as it will pop up with a little button prompt. Uh, y is normally the button to interact with things like chests uh, and the enemies that pop up as well. Um, your character, if he moves into... if uh, or, or an enemy I should say moves into that light sphere your character will automatically start to attack them although you can uh, tap on the A button or hold down the A button uh, either way to increase the attack speed but you can just leave your character slowly hacking away at the enemies you also have this pointer controlled by the right stick and this lets you uh, either target an enemy or pick up uh, items that are strewn around like coins and stuff like that um, I must admit, this is, I really like Book of Demons, I should go back and sort of clarify. I've played this on PC, I've played this on iOS, uh, bought both of those versions, and I was really, really excited for it to come to the Switch. It's a game I like a hell of a lot. Uh, character starts whistling. Um, so, really good game, one, one of the few games I've triple, triple dipped for. Um, but, if, having played all three... I think this is probably the, the more difficult way to control the game. I would put, probably put Steam first using a mouse and keyboard uh, is probably the best way to play it. Touch screen on iOS I found a little bit cumbersome because you're kind of tapping the screen all over the place uh, which means you know you have to hold the iPad in a certain way and also you know your hand can block certain things on the screen so whilst it's okay I found it a bit cumbersome but this using this right stick to control this pointer I found uh, a little bit tricky especially when you're trying to move your character with your left stick as well so bear that in mind if you haven't played the other versions you'll probably find this absolutely fine and it's a sort of a good compromise how they've worked out the control scheme of how to do things so anyway enough yakking let's walk around this dungeon so you see here the uh, enemies highlight in red because I'm powered up a little bit at the moment I've uh, I can take those out with one hit hold down Y there to open up a chest and then I use my right stick cursor to pick up the items that brings me very nicely onto cards this game you collect cards to use as skills and equipment so it's got kind of a card collecting side to it as well uh, we'll equip that if you tap up on the d-pad you get access to all your cards uh, so you can collect all those see that there's 40 different cards to collect and you can also upgrade cards by spending uh, I think they're called rune cards. I think you get different types of rune cards. You can see the symbols in red underneath those cards I'm flicking through at the bottom. Uh, and you need sort of that amount of rune cards. So this needs one square rune card. This needs one moon 
rune card. This needs a sun and a moon to upgrade it, and so on. But here's your uh, your your deck really, where you unlock cards, and you can take your cards from here, and you can place them into your um, hand below. If you look at the bottom of the screen, that's where your hand of cards is at the moment. I've got access to three cards that I can use, and I can unlock extra slots as the uh, as the game continues. And I can flick through those cards with the L and R button on the D-pad. If I tap down on the D-pad, it brings up my stats for my character. So um, you can see there uh, my XP, health, um, cauldron contents, which I will get to in a second. And then there's very, very detailed stats here, all different kinds of uh, statistics. Chance of getting diarrhea when drinking from a fountain, you'll be glad to know, is only 2.89%. Which, uh, you know, if you're going to drink from a fountain, that's a pretty low percentage of uh, getting the uh, getting the old diarrhea there. Um, let's go back to the basic tab. You see here on our hearts, we've actually got an uh, option to level up. So if we press A, when you level up, you can choose to take a, an extra heart. So your maximum health expands, or you can take a mana to add to your mana pool to spend on cards. I always prefer taking the hearts, especially early on. So let's go back while we're talking about the cauldron here. As you go around uh, the dungeons, you can pick up materials to go in your cauldron. And maybe if, we, if you can see there on the uh, little box at the bottom that says cauldron contents, you can see the three different types of materials. When you collect them, they all get added to the cauldron. And the more materials you get, the more things that you can get from the barmaid she will give you all different sorts of prizes the really nice thing here is as that builds up as those uh, materials build up and you get more and more materials in the cauldron you get access to better and better prizes if you die you lose all the contents in your cauldron so it's kind of a risk reward kind of thing when you cash in with the barmaid and uh, take on those prizes so we're crawling through the dungeon you see at the very top of the screen we've got two green check marks that tells you points of interest oh. Uh, that you need to complete. So there's at the moment it says there's a, there's a four just appeared, which means there's four points of interest that I still need to find. Uh, and as you get closer to them, it will sort of change to be a symbol of what you need to find. Quite a cool system. And hopefully you can see again on the YouTube channel because it's uh, quite dark. I hope you can see the sort of the light as I'm moving as a that sort of area of light around me. And as I say, anything that moves into that you can interact with. So like that barrel. And press that. And you can see now I've completed everything in the dungeon. I don't think you have to complete everything in the dungeon. But we completed that floor. And we go down to the next floor. There's a really good system that I hope to be able to show you very shortly. So we completed that floor. Now, when you complete a floor, you can go back to town to restore your health, to visit the barmaid, visit the sage to unlock more cards. Uh, it has nothing to do with the fortune teller, but it does tell you there where you can go back and do things at town. But I think we'll just carry on for now, heading down the dungeon to get to the... Uh, I think we can just scroll to the bottom and see the uh, ultimate boss at the bottom. This kind of weird demon with his rubber duck. That's who we're heading towards. We've got to get through three floors and three bosses before we can reach him so this is what I really wanted to talk about as well this is a tremendous system I, I, if you know of a game that's got something like this in please let me know in the comments below but I think this is a really unique feature basically the more you play the game the more it um, records how quick you are at getting through the dungeons now obviously sitting here chatting to you guys is uh, going to skew my figures somewhat but as you as you work through the dungeons and it and it calculates the time that you're taking to do that, it begins to tailor it into this flexiscope system. Now, what that means is when you come to have a run at the game, you can actually choose how long you want to play for. So, if I change this to very small, well, actually, no, yeah, I was already on very small. If I change it to small, so it's a saying that it's going to take me approximately 13 minutes of play time to get through the next floor so I could say right I've got a spare 15 minutes I'm gonna put it on a 30 minute run and what happens is the rooms and the enemies all scale up to meet that time limit 
which is really cool. So if you've only got five minutes, and again, as you play this more, these times will get more accurate and the very small will go down to sort of three or four minutes. At the minute it's eight minutes probably because of, uh, as I say, the time I'm taking talking to you. But you can see there, you look at the left hand side, that's what you're going to be faced with, two smaller dungeon runs. If I want to play a 30 minute game, I've now got three dungeons to run through and slightly more enemies. So really, really cool system. As I say, I don't know any other game that's got this in. I hope the guys keep it in for all their future games because it's a really, really cool thing. And you can see there, as you change the uh, the types of runs you're going to get, you're going to get different rewards. You're going to contribute different progress to your overall game and get different amounts of gold. So it's really tailored to your experience, what you want to do. We'll, have a, we'll start a, a very small run. That will get through uh, all eight minutes. We'll see uh, how far we get. I just want to show you a few more things in the game and just show it off, really. I don't think I've actually said uh, much about the game. It came out yesterday, so it would have been the 30th of April. Uh, it's £20 in the UK. So it's got a bit more tutorials here about advanced movement. Change controls. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now again, I would say the mouse and again. keyboard is the is the best way to play this, but it's still such a really good game. Don't let that put you off. It's still very playable with a controller. It's just you know maybe it's just not what I'm used to. So you've got some enemies there. You may notice they've got a shield. So you have to get rid of the shield first. These zombie baddies will explode in a poisonous gas if you get caught in that gas. You, uh, you'll become poisoned, which isn't ideal. Now if you played Diablo or anything like that on the PC, you'll know, um, you can sort of tell these dungeon crawlers, you'll be clicking around with the mouse like crazy. I'm not sure how easy this will be to control on a switch once you get mobs and mobs of enemies coming at you. I think they've probably done the best they can with the controls. And again, it may just be me being spoiled from playing it on the PC and to some degree the iPad. You may notice the footprints as well. Helps you um, obviously know where you've been, but if the footprints turn golden, then the indicates that you've been down every single uh, route that you can do. So again, helps you to know which direction you're going. Got a level, I needed to use a uh, health potion, which is one of the cards in the bottom there, but I don't think I've got any. You can get, um, Wells, you see little red wells. There's one over there that you can use to the left. Sorry, uh, so no good sound over there, is it? Uh, one over there to the left that you can actually use to refill your health. Collecting with delicious loot. And avoiding the poison. So it's still sat at the top. I haven't got the uh, check mark. I'm still missing a chest. That's what it means at the top. There's a yellow chest, uh, which means there's still one that I need to find in this level. And again, probably using the uh, the pathway to know that I've been down every path. You normally get a little uh, glowing indicator as well on the screen. That gives you sort of hints in which direction you need to go. There it is in the corner. So B to break shields, I think I said. So you have to break a shield before you can start doing damage to uh, an enemy. And then as the game goes on, it gets more difficult. You have one, you know, as I say, bosses. The boss fights are quite cool. They take um, multiple stages to defeat. And at some points they're invincible while they're transitioning between stages, so they can be really tricky because they'll be spawning mobs as well all the time. Here we go, it's ramping up a bit now. Got a health potion to use, so just use that quickly. I'm being shot at by an archer. I think the other uh, classes, there is an archer that you can use, and they all move in different ways and have different abilities. So there is a good variety of different characters to use. Here's a, an enemy, uh, a boss enemy. You can see he's got three stages, that bar at the top. 
but the screen signifies he will go through three stages as you fight him. And so at some points they're invul invulnerable to different sorts of attacks during that time. But there you go. I'm probably going to wrap this up now. Hope you enjoyed that. Please um, give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment below if you played this one before and how you think you're going to fare playing it with a, uh, a controller. Uh, and if you're going to double dip for this one. It is a great game. Highly recommend it. Especially if you like dungeon crawlers. Card collecting games. is you know enough different genres here to get your teeth into. If you've got any questions, just let me know below. And uh, as always, please subscribe if you're new here. But until then, that's Book of Demons. Came out yesterday, so it's on the eShop right now. Uh, as I say, highly recommend it. Check it out. See what you think. And uh, enjoy your weekend. I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.